I'm going to share with you the secret. <laughs> no, not that quasi-scientific drivel from a couple decades ago. Rather, a very quick and efficient way to get your subframe calling done, presuming you use picks and sights in the subframe selector. So I always start out my subframe calling first with a visual inspection. It doesn't matter if I've shot a thousand images that night, I will still do a visual inspection because human eyes still catch things that subframe selectors don't see. I don't use that absurd program Blink for visual inspections. It's useless. I use Irfan View where I can quickly view images and delete them right out of the folder. And during the visual inspection, I'll remove any images that are clearly clouded over as well as have satellite trails or falling stars in them. This leaves me with only the best images to then run through the subframe selector so that it in the end selects the best of the best. Because the subframe selector doesn't know what you want, nor even does it understand what it looks for. It's just math in action. It's using statistical analysis to weigh the value of each image and making suggestions based on that. So at this point in the video, I've already completed the visual inspection. And I've opened the subframe selector and I'm presently using it to analyze the luminance subs from last night's imaging. Now there is a formula that will allow the subframe selector to instantly pick out all the subs that have to go. And if you use this formula, you won't have to go into the measurements window anymore to try to find that one peak that is just over or under the second standard deviation in order to get the value to enter into the expressions editor in order to tell the subframe selector what to remove. Let's go ahead and jump ahead to when the subframe selector finishes analyzing the subs. When it's done, the measurements window appears on the left and an expressions window appears on the right. Notice two things here. One, in the measurements window, all the subs that need to be removed have already been marked. And two, there is a formula already written in the expressions window that told the measurements window what to mark. Let's take a look at that formula. It was a viewer on a previous video about using the subframe selector tool who clued me into this when he noted that rather than looking for the specific values above the second standard deviation within the measurements window, in the expressions window, I could just enter the sigma, telling the subframe selector where in the standard deviations it should begin to reject subframes. Essentially, sigma refers to a standard deviation. So, the expression on top, FWHM sigma less than or equals to 2, refers to the full width half maximum or focus and tells the subframe selector to reject any subs in which the stars are above the positive second standard deviation out of focus. The double ampersand is a connector and states that the expressions window should look for the next statement. And the next statement is eccentricity sigma less than or equal to two. This tells the subframe selector to look for any stars that are somewhat erratic, out of shape, and anything beyond the second standard deviation of normalcy is also rejected. Then the double ampersand after that tells the expressions editor to go ahead and look at the next expression, median sigma less than or equal to two. Median often finds images that have been obscured by cloud cover or other obstructions. Anything obscured beyond the second standard deviation of acceptability is also rejected. And I'll note here that this is one of the reasons why I do a visual inspection of images before running them through the subframe selector. If there happen to be a lot of clouds during the night and I get rid of all the images that have clearly been visually obscured by cloud cover, since the subframe selector is only analyzing statistical data, it will give more refined output than if I left all those cloud cover images in there to become part of the statistical signal, so to speak. So after median sigma less than or equal to two, there is the double ampersand which tells the expressions editor to look for one more statement. In this case, star sigma greater than or equal to negative 1.5. This expression tells the measurements tool to reject any sub with a star count that is lower than 1.5 standard deviations away from the norm. I find that any sub with a star count lower than 1.5 standard deviations away from the norm probably has been too messed up in some way, obscured by fog or cloud or some other issue, for me to want to let it pass inspection and end up being stacked with the rest of the images. There'll be too much bad data in that sub. So I always hold the star count to a higher standard than the rest of the measurements. On the right, you may notice that I have a collection of processes that have been saved as a project. When I open Pix inside, I can open the project and my favorite processes are always ready to go. If you do this, you can save this formula into the expressions editor of the subframe selector. That way, when you open the project and use your subframe selector, the formula is always ready. So when you run the selector, all the unacceptable subs will be automatically removed. 
Let's take a look at this in action. On the left, you can see the measurements window, and every point on the graph represents a star that was measured. Any points with a red X was rejected. Presently, the window shows the full width half maximum or FWHM measurements. Notice all the stars above the gray area that represents the second standard deviation have already been removed. Note that if you are shooting with a mono camera and using any technique that requires you to make multiple sets of masters such as LRGB or various narrowband techniques, you will have to run a separate assessment for each filter. So in my case, an assessment for L and then another for R, another for G and another for B. Let's take a look at eccentricity, that's star shape, often affected by things like wind blowing around your mounts or poor guiding for one reason or another. As before, every point on the graph represents a star that's been measured. And as before, every point that appears above the positive second standard deviation, that's the gray line at the top of the graph, has already been X'd out, or rejected by the subframe selector. There's nothing further for you to do. Let's take a look at the median measurements, which is particularly good at removing images that have been obscured by clouds and fog. And as you can see, every point on the graph, or every star that was obscured, has already been removed. And if you look all the way over to the left of the graph, you'll see a consecutive line of what looks to be a couple dozen subs that were removed. That means that at that point in the graph, there was some cloud cover obscuring all the stars. Since those images must have passed visual inspection, it would have been partial cloud cover. But those subs were far enough off statistically that the subframe selector decided they weren't good enough. And that works for me. I'd rather put the best of the best images into my stacks and reject the rest. That is a key to getting good images. Or as a professor once told me way back in my postgrad days, good data, good results. Finally, let's take a look at the star's measurement. And as you can see, using this formula, every star that falls below halfway into the negative second standard deviation has already been automatically rejected, according to the instruction written into the expressions editor. I'll output the accepted subs into my awaiting subframe selector folder for NGC 1333. Now let's go ahead and measure the next group. With this prepared formula, the process is amazingly fast. I'll set the subframe selector for measure, clear the previous subs, and place the red subs in the measurement group. I almost always shoot in LRGB, so I end up with four sets of subs that have to be measured. But, using these pre-made expressions, it goes very quickly, as you're about to see. For the subs in the measurement group, I'll just activate the window, and in moments, we'll have a called set of subs that are ready to output into the awaiting SFS folder. There they are. I don't have to look at them. I can just go ahead and output them into the SFS folder now. Now all I have to do is rinse and repeat this process with the green and blue subs, and with the pre-written expression, this goes quickly. It's almost too easy. And within just a few minutes, I end up with several hundred subs of NGC 1333 that are ideal for stacking and ready for editing. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, observations, or thoughts, please leave them in the comments section below. And if you appreciate these tips and like what you see on the Sky Story channel, please take a moment to like and subscribe. Now, get out there and shoot that sky.